Good morning, YouTube. So what we're doing today is I'm gonna be working on assembling a bit of this carrier unit that I got on Amazon, or Yukon Gear Duragrip Rear Dana 44 carrier unit. I'm buying this because I changed my rear differential fluid not too long ago and found chunks of teeth in the oil. So it's my assumption and my understanding reading online and everything that the spider gears in the fa factory limited slip differential aren't great and they can spontaneously begin to just fall apart. This Jeep has 150,000 miles on it. It's factory 373 Dana 44 Sahara rear end. Um, so at 150,000 miles, I'm assuming that everything's just going to need to be replaced. So I went ahead and bought a master rebuild kit from Yukon Gear, a new carrier, new ring and pinion gear. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh all the bearings. I just did the axles not too long ago, and the, ax and the gear oil was a bit dirty. That's why I decided to go ahead and change it. But that was only a few hundred miles ago, so the axles and everything should be good, the bearings and all that stuff. They've probably got a little contamination in them, so I'll make sure I clean them up when I take them out. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and refresh everything in the rear end. So I did try to take it to a shop. They did not include a ring and pinion gear for whatever reason. In the estimate, they wanted $1,400 to do it. So they wanted $600 for the carrier unit. Or no, it was $499. I'm sorry. $500 for the carrier unit. I got it for $350 on Amazon. Same exact unit. And uh, the kit, I think they wanted $150. This was $200 from Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. It's a Yukon Gear authentic part sold by Yukon Gear store on Amazon. And you can see everything is packaged up. looks good. We've got a bunch of shims for the carrier and the uh, pinion. New bolts, new crush leave, new nut, new seals and everything to go on the pinion and stuff. All Timken bearings going on in here. Thread locker and some uh, paint to go on the gears so that you can... Uh, Make sure you're getting a good gear pattern and everything. So we've got everything we need here. All I'm going to do today is just install my ring gear to the carrier unit and um, put my bearings on the pinion. So these bolts do have a, have a bit of oil on them to keep them from rusting in the packaging. So you don't want that oil to be on the threads when you apply the thread locker. So I'm going to take a bit of brake cleaner and just spray those down. And you can see the oil coming off on the rag. Another thing I'm going to do is make sure that these actually fit my ring gear, and they do. And also identify which holes they fit through. These would be the larger holes on my carrier. So I'm going to get this out of the way and get a fresh, clean rag to set these down on in preparation for the thread locker. So I've got these all lined up so when I'm ready, I can just go right down the row and apply my thread locker. I'm not going to do that yet because the first thing I've got to do is get this heated up so it will actually fit over the carrier unit. For that, I'm going to use a heat gun. Some people put it in their oven in their house. Whatever chemicals are in this thing, I do not want that off-gassing into my oven. So I'm going to use a heat gun outside. Okay, this is going to be a somewhat non-scientific process here. I don't know how hot this needs to be to be able to slide onto the carrier unit, so I'm just going to heat it up slowly, test fit it, heat it up slowly, test fit it until it will fit. Make sure you have some welding gloves handy because this thing is going to get hot and you don't want to put your hand on that. So I'm going to put this on the low setting and begin warming it up. This is getting warm to the touch. It's not hot, but I don't want to overheat this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and test fit it and see if it'll slide on. Oh, wow, look at that, it does. No, wait, not quite. So I think we're actually almost there, believe it or not, about three and a half minutes of heating with the heat gun. So I'm gonna give that another minute or two, but it's pretty close. The other thing you wanna make sure of is when you go to set that in place, that there is nothing on either one of these mating surfaces because you want it to sit absolutely flat.
and that does actually sit on there. So I'm going to take two of these bolts to hold this in place. So this ring gear isn't really hot. It's just kind of warm at a touch. I can leave my hand on it. It's a little warm, but not terribly hot. So just to kind of give you an idea of where you should be with it. But it is sitting flat on a carrier unit. And uh, we're ready to go ahead and put the thread locker on the bolts here. So the thread locker is going to be the red stuff that came with your kit. I'm just going to kind of flip that a few times to make sure it's mixed up a little bit. It's been sitting in the packaging. I'm going to break off the tab there and then put a little thread locker on each one of these bolts here. Put the lid back on for now until we do the other two bolts. Then I'm just going to thread these in. Remove those first two that were holding everything in place and put a little thread locker on those two. I'm gonna get a wrench and just kind of snug these down and then I'll take them over to my press or something so I can get a good grip on them and torque these bad boys up. So these appear to be about a 20 millimeter socket, which I do not have, but I have a 13th, 16th, and this seems to fit pretty snug. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug these bolts up in a cross pattern and I'll get the torque on them in a minute like I said I just want it to hold the ring gear in place because as it begins to cool it's going to want to pop back off the carrier unit we don't want that just trying to make sure I've got them all snug Okay, now let's torque this thing down. Okay, so to get some good torque on this thing, I've got it in my shop press, and I'm gonna have to continue to move it around to get it to um, be able to get my cross pattern in it, but this is probably, or this is gonna work, so 135 foot-pounds, let's make it happen. Might not be a bad idea to mark these as you go around. That way you know which ones you've done and which ones you haven't. <clears throat> God damn. Might want to try to secure that to the floor somehow. Because as you can see, the whole rack is wanting to spin. I'm having to use my shoulder and or body to hold it to keep it from moving. Yeah, 135 torque pounds, foot pounds is no joke.
Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, doing that on this press was not a good time. And uh, what I had to do was literally squat down in a position like this and use my body to hold the rig from moving while putting that torque on there. So that was not fun. I'm sure my leg's gonna bruise up and everything uh, from pressing on this bar here. But I got the torque done, so that's the important thing. Just be aware that you may want to find a way to secure that to the floor or something if you're going to use one of these. Everyone, if you enjoyed today's video, I would invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below right there on the right hand corner. And if you felt that the products in today's video is something you might like to own yourself, there's a product link right up there to the right, upper right hand corner, or down in the description will be a product link for you to purchase the product as well. Thank you very much for watching YouTube.